Hello team, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Jashwan Bamakanti. I'm from the Prisma SASE product management team. Um, as Kuram mentioned, we'll be talking about Prisma Access 4.1, what are the new features that we launched and uh, what are the details of those features. Uh, please uh, keep your questions to the end of the presentation and uh, we will be going over all the questions at the end. As Kuram mentioned, uh, we will be talking about these features in five different buckets. Uh, application and user security, user experience, user and branch connectivity, partner-centric offers, and um, uh, regulatory compliance and geographical availability. All right. Uh, starting from application and user security, this is just an at a glance. Um, we, uh, we have introduced uh, traffic replication support. This was available in preview mode for 4.0. Uh, this is made GA by 4.1. Um, Third-party device ID. Again, uh, this is uh, and the ability for the uh, customers to uh, integrate with the third-party IoT solutions that they may have in their environment. The next is uh, ADM powered by AI Ops. Uh, we will be covering this in more detail. Uh, we all understand, know and understand ADM, which gives us the application performance, how we are enhancing those capabilities with the introduction of AI Ops, and how we are giving a knock view to the user uh, to get the complete visibility of the connectivity. Uh, we make uh, continuous modifications from an activation perspective. Uh, so we uh, have made a bunch of change, a bunch of uh, improvements on the activation side, and we continue to do so in our coming releases as well. The next is uh, third-party SD-WAN uh, automation. Uh, uh, a lot of our customers do tend to have uh, third-party SD-WAN in their um, uh, in their network and uh, it always becomes uh, a big bit of a problem for them to have two uh, different UIs and uh, try to automate uh, multiple sites uh, between Prisma Access and SD-WAN, onboarding the sites and mapping them to Prisma Access region uh, locations. Uh, so this gives them an easy way to actually get one UI uh, to actually uh, detect these sites and um, uh, set up connections with Prisma Access. The first vendor that we are working with on this is Cisco Miraki. The next item is we have significantly increased the number of sites, the remote sites that can be onboarded in a particular tenant. Uh, the limit, uh, I mean, the, now we can support up to 15,000 remote sites and at the same time about 70,000 routes. From a connectivity perspective, uh, we have um, um, uh, we've made some big improvement, big launches on the uh, uh, Prism Access 4.0 with ZTNA connector. Uh, with 4.1, we are going uh, GA with uh, high bandwidth SC over uh, GCP interconnect, also termed as Colo Connect in some of the scenarios. From partner-centric offers perspective, from a multi-tenant perspective, um, our bulk configuration support uh, uh, will now be available. Uh, this will be available uh, based on a feature flag. Uh, please work with the product team uh, if any of your customers is interested in using this feature. Uh, the next is uh, from an app, uh, a locations perspective, we continue to add new locations and compute regions. Um, uh, admin guide and Prisma access data sheet is updated accordingly based on the new locations and regions. All right, uh, getting into deeper uh, 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 of these features, uh, deep, uh, getting a little deep into these features, right? Um, first one is, um, uh, AI, AI of powered, uh, uh, ADM powered by AI ops, or first industry, um, uh, industry's first AI powered ADM. Um, so we all understand ADM gives us functionality of um, uh, understanding the end to end uh, application performance. Uh, we don't just report about the application usage, we also talk about what is the performance when the user is accessing the application and what is his experience looking like. Now, with the help of AI Ops, uh, we have uh, we have introduced a holistic observability, um, AI powered remediation, and operational simplicity. Now, how we do this is with the introduction of our AI Ops platform. Um, we have these users uh, sitting at many locations, and uh, uh, there are multiple parts of um, uh, a network that actually affect that actually tend to affect uh, a user's application. Now, what we do with um, uh, with our ADEM powered by AIOps is we have the end-to-end -end probing with ADEM uh, that actually measures the application performance. Uh, with AIOps, what we do is uh, we uh, 
are able to actually identify the problems, not just the symptom of a problem, but the main problem, correlate all these, all the related incidents and actually uh, focus the user's attention on the actual problem instead of uh, trying to chase down the symptoms. Uh, uh, um, not just the uh, uh, the problem itself, uh, AIOps also gives you the uh, details on the impact in terms of how many users are impacted, how many sites are impacted with a particular problem and uh, potential remediation steps uh, that, uh, that need to be taken either by the user or if it's an infrastructure event, uh, we will be taking those steps for the customer, but keeping the customer, uh, customer uh, updated and uh, giving them visibility into what the problem is. Right. So essentially, uh, we have our users, branches, uh, we have our data centers, applications. Um, uh, with all of this, we evaluate all these incidents, detect anomalies, and then um, uh, reduce noise by correlating the incidents, and then give you uh, uh, all the details that you need to be able to take an informed decision in terms of resol resolving this incident. This gives a complete knock persona view for the end customers and uh, makes their troubleshooting a lot easier by reducing their mean time to resolve. Um, so this is uh, all powered by our uh, uh, AI ops engines um, that are running in the back end. Uh, you will have, uh, I mean, I saw it in Kuram's schedule as well. There is a complete deep dive session on AI ops. Uh, if so, if you're interested in this functionality, please do make sure to attend the, that session. Uh, where we will be walking through uh, the complete detail of how this feature is, how to get licensed to this, and then um, uh, how to actually uh, make the best use of this product. Right. Uh, the next is um, high bandwidth private apps with Colo Connect. Uh, we have plenty of our large customers uh, who have large data centers and they need uh, big connections, I mean, the big sized connections to their data centers. Uh, today, we have two modes of connectivity to our private applications. One is service connections, uh, which is uh, uh, one gigabit is the limit for the service connections. And uh, uh, they serve, uh, they have been serving as private app connectivity since the beginning of Prisma Access. Now, there are a couple of challenges with uh, uh, service connections. One is overlapped IP subnets when connecting to private applications. Now this solution, this problem was solved by ZTNA connector, right? Uh, uh, the second problem uh, with the service connections is you have uh, one gig is the maximum amount of capacity that you can have for one service connection, which means if I want a bigger link to my data center, that becomes a challenge because now I have to manage multiple tunnels and service connection endpoints. Now to solve uh, these scale problems and, the, and to have uh, one dedicated connectivity to the data centers, what Colo Connect offers is um, the customers can come in and uh, uh, procure uh, uh, space in the um, cloud exchange facilities, as an example, Equinix. And from there, they can actually directly onboard their uh, data centers uh, and give connectivity to uh, Prisma Access. This way, they will have one big unmetered pipe uh, from uh, from uh, Prisma Access to their data center. They don't have to go through the hassle of setting up IPsec tunnels, and we can give them uh, up to 20 gigabits per second of uh, fully redundant connectivity. Uh, all of this onboarding can be simplified uh, is simplified uh, via the Colo infrastructure. And once the link is set up, any mobile users or uh, branches are able to actually connect uh, uh, to the private applications using this link. Again, there's a separate SKU for this. Uh, so if you are interested, please reach out and let us know uh, if you have any further questions or uh, if your customer is uh, looking for something like this. The next is third-party device IDs, uh, uh, data sources uh, for device ID. Um, when we are setting up policies, we have uh, uh, different match criteria, and uh, uh, one of the match criteria is device ID, which is the ability to be identify what device it is, and based on that, uh, allow or deny connections, etc. Now, in Prisma Access, we can integrate with our own IoT solution using Panorama, 
uh, and we can identify the devices, learn the device mappings, and apply them as a, a, a criteria for policies. Now, what we have seen is uh, some of our customers, uh, uh, select customers, actually have a, a third-party IoT solution. In that scenario, we have no ability to actually learn those device ID mappings, and it's difficult for the customers to actually just forego the uh, third-party device, uh, third-party IoT systems. To support this use case, what we have built is uh, an API service, an edge service um, that um, uh, that can receive API requests or API calls from third-party IoT sources, and uh, uh, this edge service is able to actually update our Prisma access with the device ID information. Now with this device ID information, you will be able to configure policies even though this device ID information is actually received from a third party IoT solution. All right. Um, the next is traffic replication. Traffic replication is a major functionality that we launched in 4.0 as a preview. Uh, essentially, what this is doing is actually giving you a copy of all the captures of, of, of all the traffic uh, that is going through um, Prisma Access from remote users. Now, whether this traffic is going to internet or any SaaS applications, uh, uh, what happens today is uh, uh, there is not uh, it uh, it in Prisma Access we don't give complete visibility um, of the uh, actual traffic, and uh, some of the customers actually have um, uh, uh, requirements to actually have the copy of the traffic for their forensic analysis, uh, for uh, uh, for uh, you know keeping the records of the traffic. And in those scenarios, what they have, uh, what we have launched is the uh, support for traffic replication, where this traffic will be now um, uh, sent to the S3 bucket so that the customers can either uh, export the traffic or come in and view the packet captures of the uh, complete traffic going from remote networks to this internet applications. Now this this uh, uh, traffic can be exported into their backend systems, uh, and uh, uh, it can be exported into their backend systems, and that can help meet their compliance requirements. Uh, if they have uh, uh, other forensic analysis tools like Netwit uh, NetWitness or CodeLight, uh, this traffic pack capture can be fed into that, into those tools for further analysis if, if they have any kind of an issue. This functionality was, as I mentioned, preview in 4.0, and it is um, uh, GA in 4.1. Uh, the next item is multi-tenant bulk policy management. Uh, now we have launched multi-tenant platform and a lot of our customers, not just our uh, uh, managed services partners, but also a lot of distributed enterprises have been leveraging this platform. Uh, whenever there is a need for the customer to actually create a separate tenant, they automatically get the multi-tenant view. And uh, this multi-tenant platform uh, 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 was mainly focused on visibility from an aggregated standpoint across multiple tenants. Uh, with this functionality, what we are giving the users to do is um, uh, at a global level or at a root level, they will be able to define a set of policies or objects, and they can actually share that configuration with the, either all the tenants or select tenants across their hierarchy. Uh, now this, um, uh, functionality will be available as uh, a feature uh, a feature flagged. Uh, so if any of your customers are interested in this, please reach out. Actually, uh, it's me. So please reach out to me and uh, we can evaluate and get, let, let you know when we can enable this for your customer. Now, the next item is, as uh, as we all know, some of our retail customers have a large number of uh, uh, remote sites. And uh, it becomes a challenge today because uh, we have limits in terms of how many remote sites we actually support and test within one tenant. Now, with this kind of a support, uh, with this support, uh, we are increasing uh, that count to 15,000. Uh, we have made improvements in the commit times and at the same time also increase the route table capacity up to 70,000. Uh, and again, as always, uh, if in case you need uh, uh, a bigger capacity or uh, if you have uh, concerns with going uh, um, uh, with such a big um, uh, you know, number of sites, you always have the options to divide up the environment into multiple tenants and uh, do your management accordingly. Uh, the next item is third-party SD-WAN uh, tunnel automation. 
uh, so we have some of our partners that are using our uh, third party using third party SD bands. Um, some of the examples are Viptela, Miraki, VeloCloud. Uh, in those scenarios, uh, uh, what happens is uh, SD WAN deployments. Uh, I mean, there could be multiple sites, multiple devices, and uh, uh, now when they start with Prisma Access, they have to now map out all those devices to the different uh, Prisma Access locations, and uh, it becomes a challenge for them to onboard these devices in two different UIs separately, uh, doing the configurations. Now, with this functionality uh, within the Prisma Access UI itself, they can use the Miraki API to actually onboard the sites right here on the uh, Prisma Access UI, and they can map them to a particular location. This actually significantly reduces the overhead and gives one comprehensive view across the two platforms. So uh, we have uh, uh, initiated this task with Cisco Miraki, and I think we have uh, a few more in our pipeline. Uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions on any of these. Right.